One of the most common causes of snake bite in South Africa is people standing on snakes. And there is a snake in my pathway. But thankfully, it's just an egg eater, Daisy Paltus Scabra. And although they are harmless, this little guy had a very unique way of showing me he was there. He is attempting to imitate a viper in order to scare me off. So this right here, guys, is easily one of my most favorite snakes in South Africa. He's in a very defensive position right now. The smallest little agitations can get him to start coiling around. And listen to the sound when I put the mic here. Listen to that, hey? That's them using their keeled scales, grinding them together in this position to make that hissing sound, to imitate our more venomous snakes like puff adders, and all those other snakes that puff out and that are incredibly venomous. And that sound works so well, it's enough to even intimidate elephants. But they are completely harmless to us, as they mainly feed on eggs, and their teeth are reduced to such a point where it's almost non-existent. I'm sorry, big guy. You're a very beautiful little snake. Today, I'll be exploring different habitats in order to find reptiles. They have unique habits, and one of the best ways for me to start finding them is by flipping rocks. And as long as I do it gently, I can respect the environment at the same time. And this right here is another amazing find of the day. This is the spotted harlequin snake, a seldomly seen snake due to their burrowing habits. They often inhabit the burrows of other animals in search for legless skinks and potentially even small rodents, who knows? Not much is known about them. Stunning, vibrant colors down the body. And one thing they love to do is their head twitches like this quite a lot. They, they tend to tuck it under their body. And as they do that, it kind of looks like they're striking at the same time. You see, she's quite calm now. Perry's been working really well with her. Absolutely amazing snake. Don't want to irritate her too much. So we're going to put her back in the grass now where she can be free. There she goes. Stunning colors. One thing we can do to speed it up is you just give a little tail tickle, gets all of them going. Harlequin snakes are mildly venomous, so if you ever encounter one in the wild, best to leave them alone. Low shrub fainbos is one of the perfect ecosystems for snakes, and its beauty is unmatched out of the biomes in South Africa, and is always a pleasure to walk through. But despite that, even the grass can provide a perfect spot to find a little critter. Check this out, as I move my hand, he keeps on moving to hide under it. He's so cute. There you go, big guy. Absolutely adorable. This right here, guys, is a cape skink, and this is an excellent sign to have out here because these guys are often the prey of cape cobras, puff adders, and all sorts of larger snakes like that. Absolutely love these guys. You can see that his legs are tucked right on the side, and a lot of people often think these guys themselves are snakes, but in fact, they're just harmless cape skinks. Absolutely beautiful and a great start to the day. Where there is prey, there is predator. And sometimes, when you're out looking for snakes, they end up catching you instead. This is the cross-marked whip snake, Samophis crucifer. And lucky for my buddy Tim here, this snake is rear fanged, but only mildly venomous. And once he was done with his little love bite, he went back free where he belongs. The Scarp Stecker. They were once believed to have a venom so potent it would kill sheep, hence its Afrikaans name. But they are only mildly venomous rear fanged colubrids, and their venom has little to no effect on man. And this right here looks like a tiny little adorable ball of beautiful spots and stuff like that. Beautiful belly of a spotted grass snake, although I prefer to call them the spotted Scarp Stecker. Quite nice, they come out quite nicely, but when you encourage them to leave, they can be incredibly fast. Let's see if you'll head off. Look at that, there you go. Bye big guy. My next target led us to a very unsuspecting biome that not many people think would be appropriate to home reptiles. 
The coastal fables paired with the magnificent rocks of the beach provide a perfect habitat for these agamas and girdle lizards. All right, so this is one of the reasons why you would love to come out and look for critters on the beach, and that's because of agamas. This right here is the rock agama, agama artra, a beautiful specimen in that, and they are always ready to bite. Look at that mouth coming out here, and if I give him the chance to, ah, he got me. Oh. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not that bad, but they're very, very quick on the rocks here. This is one of the two species out here. We're going to put him down, and then we're going to try catch the other one. Are you going to chill or are you going to run? That's the question. Sometimes when all else fails, they play dead and stay dead still like this, hoping that you'll lose interest in them. And uh, it does work most of the time with birds and stuff, but with me, it's not going to do much. But one trick, take your finger, you tickle the bum. But he doesn't, he doesn't even want that. <laughs> all right, and this is the second lizard that you may find on the beaches here in South Africa. This is the Cape Girdle Lizard, Cordylus Cordylus. And there are actually a multitude of different species of them here in South Africa. And take note of that beautiful spade-shaped head. It makes it absolutely perfect for them to get into the cracks. And if you take note to their tail, this is pretty much what they're named after. That tail wraps around them in the cracks, making them impossible to pull out. So it's a fantastic defense method for them out here. So they can stay safe and active in the rocks out here. Such amazing animals. As the sun sets, it's time to move to the last chapter, where we possibly find one of the most unique reptiles of them all. Alright, so we're in a new location right now, and as you can tell, it's dark. So what we're doing right now, is I'm out shining the torch on the trees here, take a look at that sunset by the way. And this way I can spot out chameleons that are potentially hiding on the edges of these branches and stuff. It's a very nice method, I'm not really looking right now because I'm talking to the camera, but when we find some, you guys are going to see all about them. Absolutely stunning animals. Alright, and the first flip for the night is a beautiful slug-eating snake. These guys are snail specialists. They feed exclusively on slugs and snails. They have specialized teeth that are used to grip those slimy little buggers and pull them right out their shells if they need to. And they have these beautiful little checkered points on the side of their belly there. Stunning little animal. Very cute. Absolutely love these guys. And here we go, here's our first little chameleon, you can see he's hiding out there. Super adorable, we'll bring him down for a little second and show you guys a closer look. And don't walk anymore buddy, but here we go, you can see a nice little close up of him, he's quite beautiful. Now you may notice he's a bit dark right now and that's not for camouflage, that's actually because he's communicating with me. He's saying, hey I'm grumpy, I'm moody, I don't like that you are messing with me right now. Obviously because it's dark, you can't really see what's in front of him. Shame. Beautiful species. This is the Eastern Cape Dwarf Chameleon. And they're also known as the Southern Dwarf Chameleon. Bradipodium ventrale. Beautiful species. What a stunning animal. 